Hello and welcome to the OGHS Library channel with Mrs. Berg. I'm Mrs. Berg and today we're going to be talking about GoGuardian um, and kind of how to set up our classrooms and do a couple of other really handy things and this is really going to be kind of a beginner friendly user guide. So to begin you want to go to GoGuardian.com and then you're going to want to click the sign in button in the upper right hand corner and um, my my personal opinion if you have uh, like a an account with your school or something like that, it's going to be best to log in with that link. So mine is a Google school, so I'm actually just going to log in with my Google account. And it should automatically, if you log in with your school credentials, it will be connected. You should see that you are signed in as a teacher over here, which means that you should be good to go and ready to get started. Now, the nice thing about GoGuardian is that it's actually integrated with Google Classroom. So if you are at a Google school and you utilize Google Classroom, um, you can, it actually makes your life a lot easier because you can directly import your class rosters from Google Classroom. So that's the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do today um, because I, I do think it's a really awesome feature. So the easiest way to do that, it's just right here, these two buttons are how you're going to add a new class. So if you have a Google Classroom set up, you can just hit this import Google Classroom Room. It'll connect to your Google Classroom account, um, same, you know, username, email that you use to sign in and log into GoGuardian. And then you should see all of the classes that you teach right here. And so you can just select all if you want to import all of your Google Classroom classes to GoGuardian, or you can just highlight and select the ones that you want to import. So I'm going to import my class for this semester, which is orientation to teaching. Just going to select that and hit import class. It'll think about it a little bit and then it'll sync um, all of the students that you currently have enrolled in that Google Classroom. It'll sync it directly with GoGuardian. Now, I currently don't have any students enrolled in this class because um, the semester hasn't started yet. So if that's the case with you and you're just getting your GoGuardian set up before the school year, you can actually come back to this page and you'll notice that there's a sync students from Google Classroom button. So once your students enroll in your Google Classroom, you're just going to come back here to the settings page for your class, hit this sync button, and then it'll update with all of your students and uh, it'll have your class roster here. So I will show you how to get back to this settings page. I'm just gonna go back to the home page here um, and I just click classroom in the top corner to do that. So you'll see all of your classes right here that you have added to your GoGuardian. And if you wanna rearrange them, it's really easy. You just drag and you drop wherever you want them to go. So I'm gonna put this at the beginning here just so we can kind of play around with it. So to get back to that settings page, all you do is you open the settings icon under that class, um, potentially, let's see. And then you can do all of these things. So like if you wanted to go back to that add students page that we were just on, you just hit add students. It'll take you right back there. You can also search students by name. So you could enter um, their emails if you wanted to do it that way. And then uh, there's all these other settings over here. So you can go down to settings and you can change the information about your class. You can change the tile color of your class. So I'm actually gonna change mine to blue, I believe. And um, we'll get into some of the, like the scenes and stuff and we'll talk about what those are in just a second. So just make sure you update Classroom anytime you make changes so that it does save it. And then if I go back to my home screen, you'll see that that, that color bar color updated to blue. All right, so once you get your students added to your classes and you're ready to actually begin a session, um, all you have to do is hit start class. Now, before you do that, you do have a couple of options that you can toggle on and off or change. So the first one is the chat. Um, I, depending on what we're doing in class, I may leave this on or off um, with my upper level classes, which this one is, I do like to turn it on um, because I, I like, what this does is it'll, turn on the ability for students to chat directly with you through like a direct message in GoGuardian. And I like to utilize this feature um, because a lot of students are nervous like coming up and asking you questions, but just 
you know, your discretion if you want to use that or not. You can also turn it on after you start the session. So if you like wanted to give instruction first and then turn it on when students have work time or something, that's an option too. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second. You can also change the length of time that your class is going to run. Um, so they have all of these like, you know, just blocked minutes or you can cut pick a custom end time for your class. So if I were to immediately start it, I could choose whatever time that I wanted it to end. So I'm just going to hit start class. So you can kind of see, oh, I don't have any students in that one. Just kidding. Okay, I'm going to start my fourth period class because I know I have some students in there. Um, now, none of these students are actually going to show up. Their screens aren't going to load because nobody's here uh, because school hasn't started yet. So they won't be on their Chromebooks because they don't actually have their Chromebooks yet. This is my one of my classes from last year, but I wanted to kind of show you all of the um, functions that you have once you do start a class. So you will see on the little tile, the little square tiles, you'll see exactly what the students are doing on their Chromebook and it will be live. And I'm not going to be able to show you this feature, but let's say, you know, I have one of my students who's maybe doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. You can actually once the student is online, you can click on their tile and it will expand their screen. And then you'll have some options over on the right hand side of that screen on how you can interact with them. So there'll be a chat feature there. There'll also be the ability for you to close out of any tabs that they have open or to open new tabs on that student device. So I utilize um, these features in a couple of ways. Like if I see a student off task, I'll just open a direct message to them and just say, hey, I see you're off task. Maybe try to get back on on task, please. Um, or if they're having trouble maybe finding a website that I asked them to navigate to a little bit earlier on, I can directly drop that link into their class, into their GoGuardian and it'll automatically open on their Chromebook. So that's another way that you can kind of use those features to interact directly with um, your students once you have your class up and running. Now you'll notice there's this very faint um, square right up here in the kind of mid left hand corner. When you click this square, what it'll do is it will select all of your students that are currently online. And obviously it's not working now because none of my students are online, but it will highlight your entire class as long as they are active on their, their Chromebooks or their devices. And this is a nice feature because once you select your entire class, then you're going to be able to do all of these options. Um, so you can open a tab for the students that you selected, which is super nice. Um, so let's say I wanted to, you know, send them all to a website like, uh, you know, chat GPT or something like that. I can just copy and paste that link. And when I click open tab, I can paste that link into the open tab. Um, I can't show it to you now because my students aren't active, but you can paste it. And then what that'll do is it will open that website that you pasted the link for onto all of your student devices. So it's a really great way to quickly get students to where you need them to be all at the same time. And the first time that you use it, it's really fun to like watch their reactions. You can also lock or unlock all of your student devices. So say they're like working on an assignment or something, but you want to get their attention. You can actually lock their devices. It'll show a little message on their screen like your teacher has locked, you know, your device. They won't be able to do anything on their device, not a, not a darn thing. And then you can, you know, share with the class, maybe whatever it was you wanted to share, unlock their devices so that it, they can get back to work. Um, if you have a student, I use this exclude from session. Like if I have a student that's maybe working with another teacher in a different classroom and they need to be doing something different than what we're doing in the class, you can actually highlight any student by clicking the little, there's a little like square checkbox um, by their name. You can click whatever students you want to exclude and then hit exclude from session and it will temporarily exclude and hide that student from your current active GoGuardian session, which is really handy. Um, applying a scene, I'm going to talk about scenes here in a little bit. You'll see there's this column over on the left hand side. So we'll get there in a second. And then present screen, you can obviously allow students to see a live view of something that you have open on your computer. It'll show directly on their computer as well. Here's the chat feature that you can turn on when you start the session. So you can turn, turn that on and then students will be able to chat with you um, or vice versa. If you want to turn it off, you can do that there as well. 
Um, you can get off tasks, task alerts, like if a student's supposed to be somewhere and they're not, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing, you can toggle that on. You will just have to kind of set that up a little bit. And I'm not going to go through that now because I want to talk about all of these options that you have here on your menu bar as well. So screenshots is really handy. Um, say you like see something of concern, maybe that a student's doing on their computer. When you open the student's box, you will have an option to screenshot their screen. And then all of your screenshots that you take during a session will go under that screenshots column here and you can save it directly to your computer. And so I utilize this a lot. Like if I see some, like maybe I know a student is struggling with some mental health issues and maybe they're looking at something that I think is gonna be triggering for them. I can screenshot that, send it on to the counselors and just be like, here's what I saw them doing. I'm a little concerned because of X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, and then utilize it in that capacity. You can also call students. Um, this is kind of a new feature. I haven't really played around with it, but there's a couple different like conference call options that you can utilize if you are like an online instructor. It is also integrated with Pear Deck, which is really cool, but you do have to have a Pear Deck account already set up. Um, so you can go watch, I think I have another video on that somewhere on the YouTube channel or I'll have one coming at some point. So I love Pear Deck and, and I, I think it's awesome that it's integrated with GoGuardian now. And then this is a newer feature this past year, and I love it because it's just a quick check-in. So what you can do is once your students are on and your, your session has started, your students are online, you can hit the start check-in button. And what it'll do is it'll send a little check-in to see how your students are doing. Um, so I think they can just like pick an emoji to say how they're feeling. They can type a message with more information. Then you can directly message them based on their reactions. So maybe somebody's having a really bad day. You could send them a message. Hey, are you okay? Do you need to go to the counseling office? Whatever it might be. So that's a really neat feature that I love to use as well. Okay, so that's kind of the basics on running GoGuardian from the classroom perspective. Now I wanna go into some of the things that you can set up over on the left-hand column. The first one that we're gonna look at is going to be the scenes. So scenes are where you can um, basically set up, you know, websites that you want your students to be able to access or not be able to access during your class. And it's really nice because then you can turn those scenes on and off at different periods of the class. So like maybe you're giving your students work time. You'll see I have this scene of blocked websites and I called it get work done. Um, and anytime I saw students like on a website where they were playing games, I would add that game website to my blocked get work done list so that it would be blocked anytime I turned the scene on those websites in that list would be blocked for the entire class when I had this get work done scene turned on. Uh, so that was really helpful um, and I, I, you can add to it as you go. You can always edit and update these. You'll notice I also have an allowed website for Pear Deck. So like when I'm giving a lecture utilizing Pear Deck, I only want my students to be on Pear Deck. I don't want them to be on any other websites. So I have this set up so that it will only allow them to be on Pear Deck. Now with this, you do have to allow them to be able to access Google because Pear Deck logs in with Google, um, at least in the capacity that I use it. So they do, they are able to like access Google as well, um, but I can still monitor them via GoGuardian to make sure that they're doing what they're, they're supposed to be doing. They just can't, at, access any other websites besides like Google and the Pear Deck slides that we're using. So you can create these lists just by creating lists, whether you want to allow certain websites. So this is, this would be a good one if you want to block them from like everything else, except maybe like one or two websites at a time. This is really great. Like maybe you have an online textbook, you could only allow them to access that online textbook if you're having them work out of the textbook textbook during um, the class period or something like that. So that would be kind of how you want to use the allowed list. And then the blocked website list is like if you want to create a list, kind of like I did, where you're blocking certain websites. Um, it just kind of depends on like how, what capacity you want to set your scene up in. So I'll show you the allowed websites list. Um, to create a new one, just hit create list. And then you'll have to like name it. So I'll just do example. You can add a description if you want, change the icon color, and then you'll just hit this next button in the upper right hand corner. And this is where you'll be able to add the websites that you want to allow. So maybe I want to allow Google. You can start typing in Google. You can hit search and it'll kind of pull up all of these different URLs for you that have Google in the name. So maybe I only want them to be able to access Google Classroom and Google Docs. 
or something like that, I can add those to my allowed websites list because maybe they're working on a worksheet that I want them to access on Google Classroom and it's a Google Doc worksheet. So those would be the only two things that I want them to utilize. So I create that, you save it when you're done and then it'll pop up right here and you'll see that under your scene. And then if you wanted to edit it, you just hit the three little buttons next to that list you created. You can rename it, you know, you can copy it if you wanted to maybe add more to it, um, or you can delete it, you can edit it and add more websites, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to delete that just because I don't actually need that one. So scenes are really great just to keep your students on task and doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, then the last thing that I want to kind of show you on here is the calendar. Now, if you have um, classes that occur the same time every single day, the calendar is a really nice feature to utilize. And you'll see that I already have my calendar set up. Of course, this is from last year, so I'm going to have to revise this a little bit for this year. Okay, but um, what this will do is if you add a class to the calendar, it will be automatically begin your class in GoGuardian every single day at the time that you schedule it. So you can see up here on my sessions, I have two upcoming sessions because they're scheduled in my calendar. So they will automatically begin when I have them scheduled to begin in my calendar. Uh, it does take a little bit on the, the front side to kind of set this all up, but it will save you a lot of time like clicking buttons in the long run. So I definitely think that it's worth it. So all you do to add a session to your calendar is you hit add to calendar, you choose the class that you wanna add. So I'll do orientation to teaching since I just added that. You can choose what day of the week that you want the class to be scheduled for. And my class is going to occur from 1.35 p.m. So I can just type 1.35 p.m and it's going to go until 2.25 p.m. And then you can continue to add days and times um, just like that, which is super, super convenient. I'm not gonna do all of this yet, so I'll come back and finish it. But once you add all the days and the times for that class to be scheduled, all you do is hit add to calendar and it's as easy as that. And then it'll pop up on your calendar in theory. I don't know. Where are my notes? I need to refresh it. Oh, well, I got to go to Monday of next week. Here we go. Monday, right there. And then it pops up. So that'll automatically start that GoGuardian session for that scheduled time, which is really, really helpful um, in a lot of ways. So those are kind of the basics of using GoGuardian. Um, and let's say I have a class scheduled, but maybe, you know, the school day kind of changed the time. You can always click your upcoming sessions and you can choose if you want to delete or cancel the sessions. Um, so I, I usually cancel the sessions if we have like a half day and the classes are really short and scheduled at different times and we don't have school today. So I'm going to cancel these sessions right now and then they'll go away from your upcoming sessions. Those are the basics of setting up GoGuardian and kind of utilizing it and interacting it interacting with it from the teacher end. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Please subscribe and share the love. And I will see you next time.